I want you to imagine for a second that I'm driving past you in a car in this direction at 10 miles per hour. And then for some weird reason, I decide to throw a ball out of the window. Now this ball is traveling in the same direction that I'm going. And according to me, the ball travels at five miles per hour. Now you sitting there have a speed gun and you decide to measure the speed of the ball as I throw it. What would you measure the speed to be? Well, what you'd measure is the five miles per hour that I say I can throw the ball plus the 10 miles per hour that my car is traveling at relative to you. So you'd measure 15 miles per hour. Fairly straightforward, right? But what if instead of throwing a ball, I decided to switch on a flashlight in this direction instead? What would you measure the speed of the light from the flashlight to be? 10 miles per hour plus whatever the speed of light is? No, light doesn't work this way. No matter what my car speed was, whether it was 10 miles per hour or 50 miles per hour or zero miles per hour, you would always measure the speed of light to be the same. What's even weirder is if I was to point the flashlight in the opposite direction to my car's travel, you'd still measure the speed of light to be the same. Now this is an absolutely ridiculous concept to get your head around, and Einstein was the first person to properly realize that this is how light behaved. One of the postulates or assumptions that he made when he was developing his theory of special relativity was that the speed of light was constant for any observer, except for if the observer is accelerating, but let's ignore acceleration for now. In this video, I'm not going to be talking about this weird behavior of light. There are lots of videos on this already, although if you want me to, I might come back to it at some other time. What I'm going to be talking about today is how Einstein actually came up with this idea. What was his thought process behind making the assumption that the speed of light is constant for every observer? Was he just sitting around on a beach in a deck chair and it came to him randomly? Was he that much of a genius to just dream up an idea like this? Well, he was a genius, but he didn't dream it up. Today, we're going to be unraveling a little bit of Einstein's genius. Roll the intro. Hey, what's up you lot? My name's Path and I make fun physics videos, though I don't have to try too hard because physics is already fun. Before we discuss how Einstein came up with the idea that the speed of light is constant for all observers, I just quickly want to mention, if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button because I like to hear those bells ring in. And if you want to learn a bit more about quantum mechanics, then check out this video up here. Okay, let's get into it. So how does someone come up with a crazy notion that no matter how fast I drive my car in this direction, you will measure the speed of light to be the same? Well, to understand this, we need to go back a few years to a bloke named James Clerk Maxwell. Now, old Jamie boy here was a genius himself, and nowadays he's most well known for a set of four equations known as Maxwell's equations. They describe basically the entirety of electricity and magnetism, collectively known as electromagnetism. And within this wonderful theory of electromagnetism, there's a very small bit that deals with electromagnetic waves. Now, now, these two equations describe the behavior of electromagnetic waves. Don't worry, we don't need to know the details, except for the fact that the top one describes the behavior of the electric field and the bottom one describes the behavior of the magnetic field. Now, these two equations are very specific cases of a more general equation known rather creatively as the wave equation. Now, the reason I'm putting up all of this maths on screen is so that we can make a comparison. We don't need to understand any of this, I just want to make a comparison. In the general wave equation, this bit here represents the speed of the wave, or rather it represents the speed of the wave squared. And in these two equations, this bit represents the speed of the wave squared. So let's set them to be equal to each other because they're both the speeds of waves. In other words, we can say that c squared is equal to one divided by mu naught epsilon naught. Now, what even are mu naught and epsilon naught? Well, mu naught and epsilon naught are just constants. They're just numbers. Specifically, they're properties of empty space. They're properties of a vacuum. But as we've already said, they are just constants. But if mu naught and epsilon naught are just constants, then one divided by mu naught epsilon naught is also just a constant. And if we take the square root of both sides, then on the left, hand side we've got just c this represents the speed of electromagnetic waves and on the right hand side we've got the square root of one divided by mu naught epsilon naught but as we've just said this whole thing on the right hand side is just a constant interesting to fully link this topic up what i want to do is to look at the electromagnetic spectrum starting on the left we have radio waves microwaves infrared rays and Oh, there we are, visible light. Light is a type of electromagnetic wave. This means that Maxwell's equations predict that the speed of light must be a constant. Because as we've just seen, the speed of electromagnetic waves must be a constant and light is an electromagnetic wave. By the way, as an aside, this doesn't just apply to visible light. This also applies to the entirety of the electromagnetic spectrum. It applies to radio waves, microwaves, infrared rays, visible light, ultraviolet rays, x-rays, and gamma rays, the whole lot. They all travel at the same constant speed, which is about 300 million meters per second. In other words, every second, and electromagnetic waves, including visible light, travel 300 million meters. That's pretty rapid. So the fact that Maxwell's equations predicted that the speed of light must be constant 
was a source of unease for some physicists because this meant one of two things. Either the implicit assumption that we'd make that when we travel in a car at 10 miles per hour then we'd measure the speed of light to be 10 miles per hour plus the speed of light from the flashlight. Either that assumption is wrong or Maxwell's equations are wrong because they contradict each other so one of them must be wrong. Einstein was the first bloke to properly consider the fact that our assumptions that we made might be wrong and he was the first to develop a theory that explored the consequences of this idea. However, as we've just seen, Einstein did not pull the idea of a constant speed of light out of his butt. There was some method to his genius, and hopefully this video has gone some way towards demystifying that a bit. Einstein's theory of special relativity ended up forming the basis for his general theory of relativity, which ended up truly revolutionizing our understanding of the universe. And it all began with one small assumption that was based on an entirely different area of physics. And that was Einstein's genius. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also hit the bell button if you want to be notified every time I upload. I'm going to be trying to make more of these kinds of videos, so if you enjoy them, let me know in the comments below. Also tell me in the comments, what do you want me to cover in a video like this in the future? What kind of, what area of physics do you want me to talk about? Is there a specific equation you'd like me to go through and explain a little bit? Specific areas of physics that you're interested in or confused about or anything physics-y generally? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer. As well as this, I might even make videos on topics that you've suggested in the comments below, so please leave your suggestions. Suggestions. Anyway, with all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you very, very soon. Bye 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 bye. Oh, I forgot to mention, thank you so much for 5,000 subscribers. This is crazy, this is insane. I realized I didn't say this in my previous video, even though we just passed 5,000 subscribers, but thank you, thank you so much, seriously. I'm working on something slightly different and slightly special as a 5,000 subscriber sort of video to upload, and I'm hoping you'll enjoy it. But it might take a little while to come out, so keep an eye out for that. Follow me on Instagram as well, where I post a few more updates and so on. But yeah, thank you so much for 5,000 subscribers. Really, really means a lot to me. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you really, really soon. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye.